Okay, Ian, uh, you, you've always been a bit of a hero of mine, long before I ever had the, the, the pleasure of meeting you, which is relatively recent in person. But before that, I knew of your performances, um, not least with the work of Michael Finnessy. And I've always admired the ferocity with which you, you, you consume new music, your capacity, capacity to learn it, and actually interpret it and deliver it in, in such a musical way, even when I can't possibly even get my head around the way that you can get your fingers and your brain to work in the way that you do simultaneously. So I wanted to ask you two questions, both kind of based around performance. And the, the first one is, what was it about, or what is it about my work that you're looking forward to from a performance point of view? And the second is to do with, as a performer, how do you find the plethora of styles, let's say, that there are within new music and new music for, for piano? How do you mentally move from something that could be like the work of Feldman to the work of Finnessy? And what kind of place do you have to put yourself in emotionally? psychologically, technically, to be able to do that so that you're not playing the same piece or different pieces in the same way. You're playing each piece within the kind of genre and universe within which it exists. Big question, two, two big questions. Yes, two big questions and two quite different questions. So yeah. the first question um, is one I could say a huge amount about. Um, I, in general, as a performer, I don't see what I do or what many others do as simply being a sort of recreative role or simply realising some uh, pre-existing sonic idea. If one was to do that, I think one might as well write it for electronics. I rather I rather see the role of a notated score, and uh, I don't generally improvise. I mostly play uh, from notated scores. I see it as a new way of giving shape, uh, giving direction to the hope is a creative imagination I can bring to bear as a player and uh, in a sense every new score is uh, is a new type of challenge to sort of uh, find something that's find something to create that's coherent and faithful I don't mind the idea of ability and in the case of your music um, I find this remarkable uh, what I'd say is lack of inhib inhibition in the sort of flow of the creative process. This sort of wild imagination but which uh, incorporates all these, what I might say, a sort of quasi-musical objects along the trajectory. Rather perhaps like you see things that uh, resemble certain objects in some Cubist painting and so on. Mm. And uh, I'm always very, very drawn to the temporal uh, dimension of music at all. I don't... I, I do see music uh, fundamentally as a temporal rather than a static medium, and uh, what I'm really in and I'm also because I'm also very interested in theatre and interested in film. Uh, um, I'm very interested in those times when you actually have a reasonably static range of material, but expanded over a long place of how to sort of dramatise to energise that, uh, and how simply to find responses of my own to all this fantastically varied. Uh, uh, the sonic possibilities that come out of the notation uh, there, and you know how to sort of consider uh, what what the sort of micro rhythmic, micro harmonic, and other relationships are, and how those relate to the longer time span. I find it fascinating because it's done in a way that's not really like any other music I've done. That's good. And, <laughs> but in terms of uh, the second question. If we can pause because I can't wholly remember exactly what. Well, it's it was okay there. because what I'm, I, well, I'm, I'm just going to come in there before going to second. The second question was about putting yourself in a in a yes, okay, place yeah, for yeah, a wider. But what I wanted to say, because just to, to to pick up on the role of the performer, as far as I'm concerned, because I don't see the role of the performer in this case yours as being somebody who just sits down and plays through dots. I I want you to bring your own stuff to it. I want you to bring it alive. I want you to, to find yeah, the yeah, details. Yeah, actually, if I, if, okay, if I give my response to that, I can yeah. incorporate that. 
If you'd asked me that question uh, maybe 20 years ago, I might have said something like that I think uh, there's no particular need for a performer to cultivate their own personal style. And, I, and in an ideal sense, a performer could do lots of different performances, which one could imagine were all from different performers. But maybe it's changed since then. And I've played a very, very wide range of music of extremely diverse styles. Um, I've now come to feel that if one uh, excludes any sort of commonality between different approaches, then it's very easy to play rather in the manner of a sort of performance tourist, if you like. <laughs> um, so, I'm, so I'm less hostile to the idea of uh, finding some common preoccupations and not being afraid of letting those inform a range of diverse music. But that doesn't mean in any sense uh, trying to make the music uh, conform and, uh, and minimising stylistic differences, quite the opposite. Mm. But um, an impersonalised performance uh, I don't necessarily see, except in certain cases, as being a particularly worthwhile activity. I don't think there's anything wrong with uh, allowing uh, the performer's individual sensibility uh, to find its way into the music, uh, to find its way of enlivening the music through the fact that it has a human performer. Because if, as I say before, if we don't have that, then why have human performers I, at all? I completely and utterly agree. I want you to bring your personality, your your life's experiences as a musician into that work because I, I've done my job and I hand it over and I expect you to, as I say, bring it bring it to life in three dimensions. And I wanted to, you to bring it in, in, in life, not an automaton, not like somebody else, but like you. And that's at the heart of that collaboration. And, but a performer in that situation always has choices. Uh, that's why I'd be sceptical of those who say that one just follows what an intuitive judgment says to do there. I don't, I don't see the, uh, the process of performing or of rehearsing uh, and learning a piece like that at all. I'm often faced with lots of possibilities and I can make a conscious, rational choice of those. And of course, ideally in collaboration with the composer, as we will intend to do. So... Um, but the very fact of making the judgment, making the decisions, that itself is a very personal process, uh, mm -hmm. which doesn't mean it doesn't exist in a dialogue with them. Sure. And performance is a dialogue. Composition is a dialogue with performers, but performance is a dialogue with mm -hmm. composition. And uh, as I say, in a way that, uh, I mean, even in, even in the freest of improvisation, there are usually some boundaries, and those boundaries uh, give some shape to this thing. I see notation as an extension of that, and I see the details of your notation as a huge stimulus to what I do. Wonderful. Well, we've got all that to come. We've got that journey to go on, yes. and uh, very excited about it indeed.